configurations are all around the places. The providers unified them into iConfiguration. Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? This is the sixth episode in the series Build a Library with Me. We have so far covered the topics like extension method, delegates, options pattern, and today we're going to keep looking into how to provide values for options pattern to consume. For this one, we're going to talk about some very practical scenarios like set different values like the connection strings for different environments. And we'll cover what are configuration providers, what are the common practice when you need to use one, the precedence when different providers set the same value, I'm also going to show you the techniques to inspect the values set in iConfiguration even before binding happens. Stay tuned and let's begin. The options pattern we discussed consumes the configurations. Like it on the right hand side here, it grabs a section of the configuration and then binds them to C sharp classes. Configuration providers are on the other side of the pipe. They read configurations from different sources and unify them into iConfiguration object. This code module is very flexible. You could have all kinds of configuration providers. Microsoft officially provides a few widely used ones, like JSON file configuration provider, environment variables configuration provider, command line provider, user secrets provider, in-memory provider, etc. etc. It provides a pattern to create configuration settings from various sources and addresses different scenarios. For us, once we learn how to use one or two of the providers, we will have a pretty good idea how to use the rest of them. In this video, I'm going to walk you through several very commonly used uh, configuration providers, but I'm not going to exhaust all of them. Actually, I can't, because it allows custom providers, meaning that you can make one by yourself. But that's not to the point anyway. What I want to give you is the capability to pick up any of the pro configuration providers, quickly locate the key information in the documentation with it, and use it in your project appropriately. A file configuration provider provides configurations from a file. There are actually a few popular ones. There's one for JSON, there's one for XML, there's even one for INM files. I'll use a JSON configuration provider to explain how configuration provider works. Firstly, we need to add reference to the NuGet package. By the way, I'll share a cheat sheet and I'll put the package's name on it. You don't have to remember the exact names. Step two is to register the provider into the iConfiguration builder object. For the console app, we need to create the builder like I'm doing it here. It is provided in ASP.NET Core applications. Once you have the builder, it is time to call this add JSON file extension method. This method is provided in the NuGet package that we added before. Now, once we finish registering the providers in the builder, we can build an iConfiguration root object by calling the build method. It also implements iConfiguration interface, which in turn provides get section method. Let's recap what are the two most important elements in options pattern, configuration section, and the class to bind it to. And again, that's how we consume the configurations. And just in case, I'll put a link to the options pattern to the right upper corner. Coming back to the configuration provider, we haven't really provided the JSON file yet. Just to verify that this part is the missing, I'm going to update the code to call the overload, which requires the JSON file to be exist, and then run the code to see the exception. And the error states, Configuration file settings.json was not found and uh, is not optional. Okay, so this is the last step to provide the value. Let's create the JSON file named settings.json because that's the file name that I used when calling add JSON file method. And then I'll just throw in a fake connection string configuration. To make it fun, the connection string is provided in a section named connection strings and the key level is named CQ. Value, CQ connection string. Here we go. There's the other common error that the file is expected in the output folder while the setting the file currently stays in the source folder. So here's a quick MS build trick to copy the file to the output folder. I'm not going to go deep about MS build. Now put the snippet into the cheat sheet as well. Now let's try that again. There's no output, but at least the exception is gone. 
we could use the options pattern to consume the value and output it for validation. For the sake of demo, I'm going to put in a piece of code snippet and output all the configurations. This is not part of the configuration provider, but it's very practical and useful for troubleshooting. Essentially, it outputs all the values in the current configuration object. So far, it has one value coming down from the JSON file. There's a section name of connection strings in front of the column, the property key of the CQ, and the value of CQ connection string. A quick recap. You get a package, register the provider, and provide the value. Please expect this process to be repeated again and again today. Now that we know the basics, let's take a look at some common scenarios. It is very common for us to have different values for different environments. For example, connection string could be different so that we will connect to different databases. Let's see how do we reach that goal by using a second JSON provider. Let's start by creating a settings.debug.json. And I'll copy the contents from settings.json and change the value to SQL connection stream for debugging. Let's update the source code and add the JSON file named settings.debug.json only when it's in the configuration of debug. Here I want to point out different settings will both be loaded and when different files sets the same value, the order matters and the last value always wins. In our case, since both files are setting the connection string, the one in the debug configuration will win. Apply the same trick to copy the settings.debug.json. And if we run the code now, the final value for the CQ connection string will be CQ connection string for debugging. But if we run it under the configuration of release, the one set in the app settings.debug.json will not be there. The takeaway? Providers could be registered several times and the last settings always win. It's good that we can load the JSON files for settings again and again. The configuration files usually check into the source control along with the source code. For some projects, that's okay. For others, there is a security concern. After all, the point to separate connection stream, for example, is so that the information for the production system would not be leaked and checking in a connection string into the source control under the big theme of open source being so popular defeats the purpose. To remove the sensitive value from files, there are other configuration providers at our hands. For example, an environment variable provider. Like its name indicates, it loads the configurations from the environment variables. Let's take a look at how to use it. Step one, add the new Git package, Microsoft extensions .configuration environment variables. Step two, register it. It is done by this add environment variables method. If we run it, you'll see this whole bunch of information showing up. And that's because I do have a lot of environment variables set for my system. That's it, it is pretty noisy. So the provider allows us to specify a prefix during the registration. I am only interested to see the connection string settings. So let's put a prefix of CO there just to see what we will get. Now observe the output a little bit. For most of the settings, the prefix of CO actually has been removed, but you don't see the same behavior on the last settings of connection string. Guess why? Because it comes down from the JSON file provider. Now that we have a grasp on the behavior of this environment variable provider, we can design it a little bit. For example, we could create an environment variable which had a prefix of demo underscore, and then the section name of connection strings, and double underscore there to separate the section name versus key. Then we provide the value of connection string from EMB. Let's list it to making sure it is properly set. Oh, by the way, I am using PowerShell here as an example. It works the same way on the plain command prompt. Just use set to set an environment variable there. Now let's update the code to take the prefix of demo rather than co. And let's run the code again. This time, the value for the connection string becomes connection string from EMB. Assuming this is for a dev box, when it is on the server, we could set the variable to something else. Something the dev does not need to know, actually, there are a lot of external support for this. For example, if you are deploying your application to Azure website, the configuration settings in the portal will be set to the environment variable. If you are deploying a Kubernetes service, 
The value could come from the secret, and the environmental variable configuration provider is both simple and useful. Some more takeaways on the providers. There could be different configurations for registering configuration providers. For example, environment variables allows a prefix config, and JSON providers allows a JSON file name. And also, different uh, providers could work together to provide the same value into the I configuration object. Rules still the same, the last one win. And last but not least, different providers could use different rules for setting up uh, sections. For example, for environment variables provider, it is double underscore. It is sometimes confusing because other providers use column. The reason? I guess column is the separator for environment variables on the Linux. So that is another consideration when we come across a new provider. Environment variables are widely supported, but it's not very convenient to use on the dev box. That's because the environment variables is designed for putting variables for your system, not for your application. Putting value there permanently becomes too wide, while putting value there temporarily makes you have to set the values again and again. And there's also a chance for multiple applications to have the same configuration names, and then they run into conflicts. The next provider I'm going to introduce actually solves these problems pretty well. That is, user secrets provider. Let's go over the process again. Adding NuGet package, Microsoft.extensions.configuration.usersecrets. Then register the provider by calling add user secrets of program. Setting value is a little bit interesting. We could do it all manually. There's a .NET CLI tools named user secrets. For a project that hadn't used the user secrets before, the first step is to initialize a secret store. And to do that, just run this uh, .NET user secrets init under the folder of the project. What it does, it assigns a GUID named user secrets ID to this project. And the settings for this project will be associated with this user secrets ID. So the settings scoped to the project. To add or update a secret, call set, and then provide the key and the value. Now be careful, the separator for the section is colon. And that is different than the environment variable provider. Let's run the code, and we'll see that the connection string of the SQL becomes a connection string from user secrets. This user secrets is persistent, meaning that you don't need to set it again and again for the project. The settings are associated with the user secret ID, which usually is scoped down to a specific project, so there's no conflict. Of course, if you want to share the settings across different projects, you could try to use the same secret ID. I never came across any requirement like that before. Back to the secret store, it belongs to your box, and it doesn't leave the box. That means on the deployed app, it won't be there to mess around draw settings. And also, a secret is secure, as long as your login credential to your system is well protected. For some scenarios like a unit test, we want to have an eye configuration for testing, but we don't give a shit where those settings come down from. In that scenario, we could use this uh, in-memory collection configuration provider. It is uh, in the base configuration package, so that we don't need to reference the NuGet package again. To register the provider, let's just call add in-memory collection. It takes in an I enumerable of uh, key value pairs of a string and string. And an obvious uh, implementation is a dictionary of string of string. For example, here I am thinking about adding two settings. Settings 1 for whatever it hadn't been set before, and settings 2 to override the connection string. If we run it, the settings 1 will show up in addition to the connection string, and then the connection string will have a value from in memory. This simple provider is very useful for unit tests. We've been so far looking into configuration providers in a console application. What about a web app, like an ASP.NET Core web application or a web API? Let's take a look. Firstly, I want to show you in this startup, there is already an instance of the I configuration. 
So where does that come from? Program .cs, of course. But where? The provider is actually registered in this create default builder method. Let's read the remarks in the metadata carefully. Starting from line 56, let's talk about environment variables prefixed by .NET underscore. Which provider is that? The environment variables. Line 58, command line arguments. Although I didn't show you a demo of command line arguments provider, I'm pretty confident you can guess out how does that work. Now, noticing these are load hosting I configurations. Starting from lice 60, we start to load app configurations. Starting from app settings.json and then app settings.environment name.json. The environment name came down from the hosting environment. That means it's the environment variable prefixed with .NET underscore and then the command line arguments. Now, if you have already familiar with the app settings and the app settings.development.json, I hope you have a better understanding of why now. Move on to read line 62. We're talking about user secrets for development environment and etc. etc. You get the idea. Those baked in configuration providers are usually more than enough for ASP.NET Core application. In case you need to add more, here's how. On this web builder core configure app configuration, this one takes in a delegate. And the delegate is an action of I configuration object. Now, once we get that, we know what to do. See the add JSON file, add user secrets, so on and so forth. All those extension methods from the NuGet packages could be used here. That is how to add more configuration providers into the pipe. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the cheat sheet in the description. And I'm also going to put a small quiz in hope of emphasize on the key points. Check it out and let me know if you liked the video by clicking the like button. That's my best motivation to keep up. Don't forget to subscribe and keep coding, keep improving. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.